Hey everyone, Chef Cameron Tate here for Outdoor Canada's Wild Cuisine. I tell you, honest truth, I just came back from the grocery store and picked up this beautiful beef tenderloin and I thought fall is right around the corner and if you are incredibly lucky to get an elk tag or to get any kind of elk tenderloin, this is going to be the dish that you want to try. It's going to be a elk tenderloin with fingerling potato, gold beets, and a blueberry peppercorn sauce. Let's get cooking. So any kind of tenderloin on any animal is really expensive and it's really highly prized. Uh, it's not that difficult to clean a tenderloin, but there's a few key steps how to do this. Let me show you how. So really any tenderloin, it takes three simple steps. One, to remove all the excess fat on the outside. Number two, clean the silver skin, the tough edible uh, sinew on the tenderloin. And the third one, removing the, the side seam or any imperfections. Let's get going. So along the side of the tenderloin here, this is called a side seam. And you can do a lot of this actually just with your hands. So you always start at the tip and then you work your way to the head, which is the thicker part. And all you need to do is feel actually where the seam joins the main tenderloin and just keep pulling and pulling until you're going to get right down to about this part of the head right there. And you can't pull any more after that. So what you want to do, take your knife and then just where the side seam meets, the tenderloin, you're gonna take that off. So now we're gonna take this. So we're gonna clean this one up and we're gonna have this for stir fry. We're gonna reserve that. So now this is where the head part of the tenderloin is. And again, using your fingers to feel where the main muscle is and where this fat is sort of hiding the seam. Open it up like this. And this is where a long sort of, uh, this is a 10 inch knife will really help uh, when you're cleaning this tenderloin because it's almost the entire length. So what you're gonna do is just a very, very small incision. And then we're gonna cut a horizontal cut to cut off all of this sinew and fat. Small cuts. And then actually the seam uh, comes out really, really quick. So this one here, really lots of fat and sinew. Let's go on to the next step. So now that we got this side seam off, we're gonna remove the uh, silver skin and the excess fat. And the best thing is, all you have to do is just sort of pull it off. You can make a stock out of this. And then this comes off actually really easy. So now, once you get to the, the head part of the tenderloin, open it up and you're going to see a seam between the, the head part and the main part of the tenderloin. So you're going to take your knife and you're just going to make an incision right along where this silver skin is here. Don't cut too deep because you're going to be cutting into the tenderloin. All right, so now what I do is I flip it around because I want to have one smooth stroke or as little strokes as possible. We're going to go underneath a couple inches and then what we're going to do is I'm going to put my knife on an angle and keep this nice and tight and I'm going to make one cut. There's one cut off. So if you take a look at it, there's almost no meat on there whatsoever. Now what we're going to do is roll it over a little bit, do the exact same thing. And there's actually a reason why I go from the, the tail to the head because that's the way you're going with the grain. And if you go the other way, you're actually tearing the meat. So you see the difference there? Roll it over. Yeah. Same thing. And you try to have very, very little meat on your trimming. So here's a meat lesson for you. There is four distinct different cuts in any kind of tenderloin. There is the Chateaubriand, so the thickest part of the tenderloin here. 
And then you have from here to here, which is your filet mignon. So you would find in any, any restaurant that's a really nice thick steak. And then from here to here, you have your uh, Tornado's Rossini, like a little pan fried steak. And then towards the end of the filet is your tenderloin tips. So tying or trussing any kind of roast, any kind of meat is really beneficial for even cooking. Let me show you how do you do it. So now we're gonna go underneath the, the meat itself. And I typically start in the middle and all I'm gonna do is do a slip knot. So I've got my working string here and then my short string goes over and I use my index finger like that. And then I reach underneath and then I go around and where my finger is, that's where I pull the loop and we've got a slip knot. Pull it snug, but not so it digs into the meat. Knot it again and cut it off. So now we're gonna go in half again. Again, here, around, through here. There's a lot of different ways of tying it, but this is what I like to do. Make sure it's tight. And this one would probably take, you know, only around three strings. You could do as much as it's needed to kind of keep it together, especially if there's any kind of seam or opening that would uh, open during cooking. I like to line up my knots along the side so it looks all beautiful. There you go. So I've put some fresh rosemary sprigs in here for flavor. It's really amazing. So we're, let's season it up. Kosher salt and black pepper. Coat it really nice. I like to put some saran wrap down here so it doesn't make a mess everywhere. Don't forget the ends and some freshly ground pepper. Make sure to do it on all sides. And I've got a pan here and I'm going to be using some uh, just a canola oil, which is a neutral flavor oil. You can use uh, olive oil if you want, but I prefer canola. Okay. So high heat is really important because that's where your flavor is going to be. Just a couple tablespoons of oil. And you can tell when the oil is ready, it's just starting to smoke a little bit here. Season, uh, so we're gonna sear our uh, rosemary side first. So while the beef is cooking in the oven, let me show you how to make a simple gravy. This is going to be a uh, a green peppercorn red wine gravy with blueberries. Let's get going. Butter, you gotta have it. Shallots, super intense flavor, perfect for any kind of sauce. So on medium heat, we're gonna sweat these down so you don't actually wanna color these. So once the shallots have sweated out, you're gonna add your garlic. Same thing, just let it get lots of uh, fragrance in there and really this is the base to your sauce. Okay, everything's all sweated out and nice and fragrant. Beautiful smell. Now we're gonna add our red wine. Most important thing in any kind of sauce making is take your time. We want this to reduce down and uh, to cook off all the alcohol, so we've just got the essence left over. So in any kind of sauce making, you can thicken it with uh, flour or cornstarch. I like using what's called a bourmonier, and a bourmonier is butter and flour. So it's uncooked actually, and it's just for finishing at the end of the sauce and it makes the meat nice and thick and uh, it sticks to the meat. So all you want to do is knead this together and right at the end of the sauce we're going to whisk it in to thicken it up. 
So in this recipe, it uses green peppercorns. So green peppercorns, they have uh, a little bit more of a milder, milder flavor, but uh, a little bit pickled, a little bit briny, and it's a really, really great flavor. So we're gonna take it and put it into what's called a mortar and pestle. And we're just going to grind this up just a little bit. And it kind of releases a little bit more of the flavor. It's really tasty. Okay, so all the alcohol is cooked off. Let's add our nice beef stock. And our crushed peppercorns. So this is kind of the consistency it looks like now. Still a little bit chunky. We're gonna bring this up to a simmer. So once your sauce has been uh, reducing for a little bit and you taste it and it's all ready to go, it's ready to thicken. So this is actually what a bourmignet is like. Remember, butter is flavor. So butter and flour and just at a nice simmer. And you're just gonna whisk it in a little bit at a time and it's gonna slowly thicken it. And if you don't whisk it, you're gonna have lumps in your sauce. So the roast is cooked to 125 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Use a thermometer, it's incredibly accurate. Let it rest, 15, 20 minutes at least. Let all the juices kind of go back into the meat. We've got our blueberry peppercorn sauce. So you can serve this with a little bit of uh, fingerling potato and uh, gold beets. This is absolutely bursting with flavor. Happy cooking.